In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural blue tile wall material. And after I show you how to create the procedural material, we'll be joining it together into this custom node group so you can control the look of the material. Now I have this texture coordinate outside the node group and that way the user can either use the UV coordinates or the object coordinates. So you can see here if you use the object coordinates, it looks fine from the top, but you don't really have that much control over how it looks on the rest of the material. So you can see right here on the side of this object, it's kind of stretched. So for a material like this which has a specific pattern it's usually better to use the UV coordinates and then you can UV unwrap your object how you want it so I've UV unwrapped this sphere so that it just looks good from the front and I've UV unwrapped this cube here so it kind of curves around the side of the cube and I'll show you how to UV unwrap the objects in the video but that's why I have the texture coordinate outside the node group and then we also have the scale so I can change this to change the size of the entire material then we also just have the brick width and also the row height. So you can change the size of those bricks there or the tiles. Then we have different tile colors. So we have tile color one and we also have tile color two. Now, if you want tile color one and two to be the same, so if you don't want there to be like variation in the tiles, what you can do is you can search for an RGB node and then you can plug the color up to the tile color one and tile color two and then you can just use this rgb and that's going to change both colors at once or if you just delete this you can change both of these colors individually and then we also have the mortar color which is just that color in between those tiles then we have the mortar size, so you can make it thicker or more thin. And then if I kind of zoom in here, you can see there's a little bit of a bevel on each one of those tiles. So we also have this bevel size, so you can change that if you want to. Then we also have the noise scale, so there's a tiny little bit of noise over the surface. Then we also have the roughness of the material. Then we have the mortar bump strength, so I can pop that out. Then we have the noise bump strength, which is just a little bit of noise over the surface. And then we also have the tile bump strength. And then finally, we have this rotation value, so if you want to you can rotate it around of course you can use the uv coordinates and change the uvs or you can just kind of rotate around on the x y and z axis if you want to and if you'd like to purchase this procedural material and help support the channel you can purchase it with the links in the description on my government store and my patreon page and you can also check out my ultimate blender procedural material pack which comes with all of my procedural materials pre-set up for blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails sorted catalogs and customizable node groups you can also purchase any of my materials individually on my government store and to learn how to create more procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. So before we start making the material, I'll show you what I have set up in the 3D viewport if you want to set up the Blender file the same way that I have. So I went to the add menu and I just added an icosphere to preview the material. And on the add icosphere settings right behind me, just click on that. And I'm going to turn the subdivisions up to six so it is nice and smooth. And I'll shade the object smooth. And then to make it a better size, I'll scale it down by a 0.2 and then press Control A and apply a scale. Then I also wanted to preview this on like a flat object so you can see what it looks like on a wall. So I went to the add menu and added a cube and I'm going to scale the cube down by like a 0.15 and then hit control A and apply the scale. If I go to top view, I can move it over and just rotate that over a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is click on the UV editing workspace in Blender to go to the UV editor and I want to UV unwrap these. So what I want to do is make the tile wall so it rotates around this part right here. So what I'm going to do is go to the edge select and I'm going to first select this edge and I'll hit U and I'll click on mark seam. So it's red now and that's a seam. Now I can hold down the shift key and I'm going to shift select all of these two here. So select that edge and that edge and that edge and that edge. Go over here and select that edge and that edge. And we're going to hit U and we're going to mark seam. So now we've cut this out right here and then cut it around all the way around here. So if I select everything and hit U, we can click on unwrap angle based. And now you can see that's opened up and so that'll be great for our material. I'm also going to select the icosphere, go into edit mode, and I'll go to front view, and I'll zoom in and hit U, and I'm going to unwrap project from view. So that's just projecting it from our view so it will look flat when we are in the camera view. So I'm going to move these objects here into the center of the scene, and then let's go back here to the layout. And I'm going to select the cube, and let's go here to the modifiers, and I'm going to add 
the bevel modifier, and I'll turn the segments up to like a four on the bevel, hold down the shift key and drag the amount down to make my movements more sensitive. So if you hold down the shift key, your movements will be more sensitive. I'll just make it about that big, and then we'll shade that object smooth. So now we have two nice objects to preview the material on. So then I also added a camera, and I just pointed the camera here at the objects. Let's just move the objects right down there. And if you select the camera and go to the object data properties, I turn the focal length up to 80, just to kind of zoom the camera in a little bit. I like a higher focal length. And then I also added this area light right here. So if you just go to the add menu, you can go to light and you can add an area light. And I set the shape to disk here on the area light data properties. And then I turn the power up to 50. And so that'll add some nice bright lighting onto the object. And then as for the world lighting, if I go over here to the world, I added in this Machine Shop 02 1K HDRI from polyhaven.com. So link is in the video description if you want to download it. So right here on the yellow dot next to color, you can click on the yellow dot. You can click on environment texture and then just click on the open button and open up the downloaded HDRI. And then also if you go here to the render properties, you can open up the film tab and I just turned on the transparent button so the background's transparent. And then also if you open up the color management, I set the view transform to filmic and I set the look to very high contrast to pop out the colors and make everything look more contrasted and saturated. So I'm going to click right over here to go to the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'm going to go into the rendered view and then I will select the object. Let's click on new to add a new material. And I'm going to call this material blue tile wall. And then I'll also be using the node wrangler add-on. So if you don't have that enabled, you can click on edit and you can go to the preferences. And then here in the user preferences, go to the add-ons tab and you can search for node and just enable the node wrangler add-on in the user preferences. So let's now create the material. So the base of the material is going to be using a brick texture. So you can search for a brick texture. Let's drop it here. And then I will control shift select the brick texture preview it. And also let's drag and drop the material. So click and drag here from the material and drop it onto their object so that they both have the same material. Now the brick texture isn't really placed correctly. So with the brick texture selected, I'm going to hit control T and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And you could use the object coordinates if you want to, but because this has a specific pattern, I'm going to use the UV coordinates and then we'll use the UV unwrapping from the object. So we already UV unwrapped this, so you can see that object looks pretty good, but this object, I want to kind of change the UV editing. So let's click over here to go to the UV editing workspace and I'll go into the rendered view. So one thing that I want to do is scale this up a bit. So hit the A key to select the UVs and you can scale this up quite a bit. And then I'm going to rotate this by 90 degrees like that. So you can see now it curves over and then just kind of scale this and I'm just going to scale it down like that so that kind of the very top of that tile is at the very top right there of the cube. And then if you select the icosphere, go into edit mode, you can hit A to select all the UVs and you can kind of scale that bigger or smaller. I'm going to go into the camera view and just make sure the tile are scaled to about the same size. So I'll go back here to the shading workspace. So I'm now going to change all the colors of the brick texture. And so you can use the exact same colors that I'm using. For color one here, I'm using this slight blue color and it's kind of a grayish color. And you can punch in this hex value if you want to use the same color I'm using. Then here on color two, this is pretty similar, but it's a little bit more gray and a little bit lighter. And here's the hex value if you want to punch in the same color. And then for the mortar color, this is kind of like a very light blue. It's very white. And here's the hex value if you want to punch in the same color. And then let's change some of the settings of the brick texture. So I'm going to turn the scale to eight because I like it being a bit smaller. And then I'll turn the mortar size to a very small number of 0 0.007. So with the mortar size being smaller, that little white bit in between is going to be a lot smaller. Then there's also the mortar smooth value. And I'm going to turn this all the way up to one because I want it to be more smooth. So if you zoom in really closely, you can see the edges are more smooth. And then I'll keep the other settings at the default, but you could also change the brick width and the row height. There's also this off offset here. So if you want to change the offset, you could do that. And there's also this frequency. So if you want to like turn up the frequency, you can get kind of some cool different effects, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it at the default of two. So now we can take the brick texture color and let's put that into the base color and we can control shift select the principal shader to preview it. And then also let's change the roughness. So I'm going to turn the roughness down to a 0.2. So they look pretty shiny. Now what I want to do is mix in a noise texture and we're going to mix it into the base color just there's a slight variation in slight dark areas. So I'm going to search for a noise texture and drop it under the brick and then let's take the same texture coordinate mapping and we're going to plug the vector into the vector of the noise and let's just preview the noise and I can change some of the settings. So I'll turn the scale to a 50 and I'll turn the detail up a little bit to a 6 and I'll turn the roughness up to a 0.55. 
So I now want to mix the noise texture into the base color. So to do this, I can search for a mix color and we'll drop it here after the brick texture. And we're going to take the brick texture color and put that into color A. And then the noise texture factor is going to go into the factor of the mix. And I can control shift select the principal shader. So I'll now take color B and I'll make it fully black. So now you can see there's a bunch of little black noisy areas. But what I want to do is make it more subtle. So what I'm going to do is search for a color ramp and I'll drop the color ramp between the noise and the mix. And I'll drag the color ramp right up here. And I can now click on the white color and I can drag the white color down. And so as I drag it down, it's going to be more and more subtle. So you won't be able to see the noise as much. And if you want to use the same exact gray color that I'm using, you can punch into the hex value A1, A1, A1. So that'll just add a tiny little bit of variation. Some of the tiles just have little dark areas here and there, but it is pretty subtle. So now I want to add some bump values. So what I'm going to do is search for the bump node to convert some of these color datas into a bump data. So let's take the brick texture color and I'm going to put that into the height value of the bump so it's going to convert the color data into normal data and then the normal can go into the normal of the shader. So now if you kind of look closely at the material you can see it looks like it's bumping out. Now if you zoom up really closely it looks like it's popping out instead of in so I'm going to choose invert so it's going back in. Now it still looks really sharp so what I'm going to do is use this distance value to make it look very very smooth. So I'm going to turn this distance value to a point zero 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 one so point and then four zeros and a one and i'll hit enter so that's going to make it very subtle so you can't really see it popping out but now i'm going to turn the strength way up to a 200. so by turning it up to 200 it's still going to be strong you can kind of see it but if you look closely it looks a lot more smooth now instead of it being sharp the edges there or the insides are quite a bit more smooth then I also want to duplicate this bump node and drop it after this one. And we're going to select the bump node and we're going to hit the backspace to reset all the values. And I want to take the noise texture factor and we're going to put that into the height of this bump. So now you can see it looks really bumpy and noisy. But let's make this much less strong. So I'm going to turn the bump strength of this one to a 0 0.02. So it is very subtle. So just in the reflections, if I go like right over here, just in the reflections, it looks slightly bumpy. And then I'm going to select the bump node and I'll duplicate it and drop it over here one more time and I'll hit the backspace to reset the values. And why I'm using this bump is because I'm going to create one more texture which is going to create kind of that bevel on the tiles. So I'm going to take the brick texture and I'll press Control shift d So Control shift d will duplicate the node but keep the wires plugged up so I'll drop it here and then I'm going to take the color and put that into the height value as well. And let's zoom into the brick texture and I just want to change a few of the settings. So on the mortar smooth I'm going to turn it to a point 7, 7, so it looks a bit more smooth. And then if I take the mortar size and change this value, you can see as I turn up and down, it's gonna add that bevel. So I'm gonna turn the mortar size to a 0 0.03, and that way there's just a little bit of a bevel. Now it doesn't really look correct, and that's because it's way too strong. So let's go up here to the bump, and on the strength, I'm gonna turn this to a 0.25. So the problem with this now is that it looks like it's pushing back in instead of popping out. So we'll just turn on the invert button, so now it looks like it's popping out. So that is it for the procedural material. So I'm now going to show you how to join it together into a custom node group. So what I'm going to do is box select all the nodes in the middle, but we're not going to select the texture coordinate and we're not going to select the material output. And I'll press Control G to join it together into a node group. And I can hit the tab key to go outside the node group. And let's drag these two nodes closer together. We can also drag here in the corners to make this longer. And then I can copy the material name and paste it here into the node group. Now I want to rename this right here because it says BSDF and I want to rename it to Shade. So if I hit tab to go into the node group, I'll hit the N key to open up the side panel and click on the group tab. And here on the BSDF, I'm going to double click on this and I'll rename that to shader because I like that better. So now we can plug up all the values, all the custom values up to the group input. So this mapping node is plugged up to all the textures, so the mapping scale is going to change the size of the entire material. So I'll put the scale at the extra socket, and then if we click on the scale, I want it to be three values instead of one. So we're going to click on the type here, and we're going to change it to float, and that's going to make it one value. Then we need to turn the default value to one, and then if we hit tab to go out of the node group, we need to turn the scale back to one. So now that'll change the size of the entire material. So let's hit tab to go back into the node group. Then I want to add the custom colors, so I'll drag the group input right up here behind the brick texture, and we'll put color 1, color 2, and the mortar color into the extra sockets, and then I'll just rename these. 
So I'm gonna rename this one to tile color one. And then this one is gonna be called tile color two, just because I like that better. And then this one I'm gonna rename to mortar color. Now also I wanna add the brick width and the row height, just so that you can control those values. So we have two different brick textures. So we need to add the brick width and the row height up to both of them. So I'm gonna take this brick width and plug this up to the extra socket, and then take this row height and plug it up to a new socket. However, if I go outside the node group and try to change this, you can see it is changing it for one of the textures, but the other one, the other one which has kind of that bevel there, isn't changing, so that's a problem. So if I go back into the node group, let's drag the group input right down here, and we wanna take this brick width and put it into the same brick width, and then this row height and put it in the same row height. That way, if we go outside the node group, we can change the brick width and the row height, and and it won't mess up the texture because it's changing it for both of them at once. So I'll drag the node group back over here. And then also I prefer to click on the brick width and drag it here above the colors and also the row height, drag it above the colors. So we have the scale, then the brick width, and then the row height. Then I wanna change the mortar size so we can take the brick texture mortar size here and plug that into the extra socket. Then I wanna control the bevel size. So let's drag the group input right down here on the bottom brick. And we have this mortar size here, and if I drag this up and down, that's gonna control the bevel. So we'll put this into a new socket, and then let's double click on this to rename it, and I'll rename it to bevel size. Then let's add the noise settings. So I'm gonna drag the group input back up here. Now you could add like the roughness and the detail and things if you want to, but it is gonna be pretty subtle, so you won't notice it too much. So I'm just gonna put the scale into the extra socket here, and then I'll double click on this to rename it, and I'll call it noise scale. Then I wanna control the roughness, so I'll drag the group input right over here and I can plug the roughness into the extra socket. Then I'm gonna control the bump strength. So I'll drag the group input down here underneath the bumps. And you can see this first one here is gonna be the mortar. So I'll put the strength in the extra socket and I'll rename this one to mortar bump strength. Then I wanna control the noise bump strength and that is this one here. So I'll put the strength into the extra socket and I'm gonna double click on this to rename it and call it noise bump strength. And then the last one here, that is that bevel. So I'll put the strength into the extra socket and you could call it like bevel bump strength. I'm gonna call it tile bump strength. And then finally, the last value that I wanna control, if I drag the input back here, I wanna plug the rotation into the extra socket. So now I can hit the N key to close the side panel and hit the tab key to go outside the node group. And you can see we have this rotation. So we can, let's just zoom out here. We can change the X and the Y and the Z to rotate that around if we want to. So if we wanna change the direction of the tiles, we can. So let's just preview the final material now. So we have the overall scale to change the size of the material. You can also use object coordinates or UV coordinates or other coordinates like generated, but I'm gonna use UVs so we have more control. We also have the scale, then we have the brick width, and we also have the row height. And then also if you hit the tab key to go into the node group, we do also have a few more of these values. You'll need to change the values for both of these at once, but you could change the offset or the frequency or the squash and the frequency if you want to. And then we also have the different colors. So we have color one, we also have color two, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can search for an RGB node, and you can plug the color into the color one and color two, and that way you can have one single color to change both colors at once if you don't want any variation. And then we also have the mortar color, so you could make it black if you wanted to, that looks kind of cool, but I prefer white. And then let's just zoom in a bit closer. So we have the mortar size, and then we also have the bevel size, then we also have the noise scale, we have the roughness of the material, so you can have it really shiny if you want to. Then we have the mortar bump strength, the noise bump strength, if you wanna have it look a bit more bumpy, and then also the tile bump strength, which is that bevel. And then finally, the rotation values. So that's how you create this procedural blue tile wall material. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel and purchase the procedural material, you can get that with the links in the description on my Gumroad store and Patreon page. You can also check out my ultimate Blender procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials. And to learn how to create more procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.